Thank you. And almost 80 women and children accompanied them. We enlisted. Trusting God had a purpose in having us join them. Fort Leavenworth. <laughs> so when the men got here, they had traveled 140 miles to get here. And they were getting ready, practicing, and training for their time here in the Army. Look around and see. Oh, oh. well, hi. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi, here? everyone. I'm Martha Sharp. Did you just arrive? Yeah, you yes. can talk to her. We just got yeah. here. Feet are a little sore, but. What the? <laughs> oh, we said we just got here, Martha. It's kind of a long journey. Well, I'm glad you all made it. Thank, Thank you. Sorry. You missed all the excitement. What excitement? Charlie Colton. You remember Flanders' nine-year-old son? Yeah. He just wandered in. What? Since you ran away to catch up with his pa, uh, the Captain Allen, I mean Colonel Allen, said he could stay since we're too far to take him back. <laughs> I'm so oh, I'm so glad he's all right. Oh, that poor boy's mother. Flanders already sent a letter to her. Uh, Any about the uniforms? Uh, As a volunteer army, we can choose to receive uniforms or a clothing allowance. Which means we can wear what we've got and send the money back to help the others move west. That is wonderful. Oh, we better get inside. Hi. Close that window so we don't get wet. <laughs> well, hopefully the roof holds up okay. We've been having some weeds. <laughs> we've got a bucket though, so if you feel any drips, please let us know. <laughs> Oh, don't want really to get down out there. Well, if you look here on the map, you can see how far we traveled to get here to Fort Leavenworth. They traveled, met up at Council Bluffs, and then traveled down along the Missouri River here to Fort Leavenworth. Once they got here, they were outfitted as soldiers and trained. So they each received several different things. No uniforms, just like Norman said. But they received several things to help them be recognized. So one of the first things they got was a pouch for their ammunition and this carried about 40 lead balls along with the powder. And across the other shoulder they'd wear a baldric. You can see this one has the U.S. Gold Eagle emblem on it. And inside they'd have their bayonet which would hook on the end of their musket so that they would be prepared in the event of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mm -hmm. So along with those two things they had a white belt that they wore over top of those other items to hold them down. It just has U.S. on the belt buckle. So that was the extent of their uniform. They each wore whatever clothes they had, whatever condition they were in. But they each did receive some supplies. So they each made a canteen, sort of like this. It's made of wood, pretty heavy, but it only holds about three pints of water. So. Those three pints would sometimes have to last them a few days. They were marching through the desert and it got pretty dry. So, have to ration the water out. So along with their water, they of course had food. Not too much of it though. This was their haversack, their old fashioned lunch box to carry about five pounds of food. Mostly dried meat, dried beans, flour, things like that. And then each of the men would also receive a knapsack like this one. It would have to hold all of their personal equipment for the whole entire year. Ooh, not too much space though, huh? <laughs> and then on top of it is their bedroll. They were divided into groups called messes. So there would be six men to a tent, and that would be their comfortable beds, huh? 